Hello and welcome to this talk where I will try to summarize three decades of geoconservation in retrospection. This work has been done uh, in conjunction with uh, Margaret Brooks from Murdoch University in Perth, Australia, and I am Enrique Diaz Martinez from the Geological Survey of Spain. Uh, this is a brief overview of uh, what I will be talking about. Um, in a few phrases, I will summarize first the global evolution of geoconservation in these last three decades, the main issues, and then I will go through a chronology with the main actors and achievements. Uh, I will afterwards talk about the promotion that has been done in Spain for geoconservation on both the international and national agendas, um, weaknesses and threats um, that we can uh, learn uh, from, and also accordingly some suggestions for the future. This uh, summarizes these last uh, events in the <clears throat> history of geoconservation conservation in the last three decades. There has been a very accelerated evolution and many advancements. And also a few steps backward. We uh, here pro provide a summary. Of course, it is subjective always, uh, according to what is our perspective. Uh, from several points of view, what we have learned in Australia and Spain, and also the many publications from other countries, and particularly also from United Kingdom, and of course globally. I say this because United Kingdom and Spain have had a, a very active geological survey uh, since the mid-19th century. And we believe that this earlier background probably facilitated the conditions to both begin working on geoconservation, both institutions, in the 1970s. <coughs> and uh, thus became uh, active protagonists of the developments and achievements that we are hearing describing. This acceleration of achievements that we will see in the lower bar that you will see later uh, began in the 1990s with the first national and international scientific organizations, many working groups and meetings that took place still are taking place, followed by the turn of the century with the constitution of global networks, particularly for the geoparks, the adoption of international resolutions, publication of many <coughs> books and articles in scientific journals that we will mention. So this is still going on, lots of work done, lots of things to be done yet. Going in more detail with this uh, chronology, um, it is important to mention first the 1972 the convention, the UNESCO Convention on World Heritage, which included criterion eight that accounts for geological heritage. So now that uh, we are uh, using these world heritage sites, cultural, natural, and mixed, natural and cultural, that some of them are specific uh, uh, for geological heritage. And in 1988, uh, it, we had the, well, I, I wasn't there, the first international meeting on geoconservation. 1989, the formation of the European Group on Earth Science Conservation, which was a precursor of ProGeo that I will mention next. And in 1990, the formation of a group that su was supported by UNESCO and IUGS, the International Union for Geological Sciences, to produce a list of global indicative uh, well, it was a global indicative list of geological sites, the Gilgis list was called as a contribution for World Heritage. It was uh, to, supposed to summarize, it wasn't finished, summarize the uh, sites of international relevance of geo heritage. Here you can see some pictures of this convention in 1972. 1991, the first international symposium on the conservation of geological heritage. At, at Digne in France uh, with the Declaration of Rights of the Memory of the Earth. In 1993, the European Association for the Conservation of Geological Heritage that you have seen mentioned before, ProGeo, uh, had its first formal start with the General Assembly that it had, but previously there had been a lot of other meetings and uh, work also done before 1993. 1995, the Global Geosites uh, Working Group of IUGS, 
started to develop this uh, database of global geological sites. That means sites with uh, geology that is of international relevance. It was called the IUGS geosites. So far, the only countries that have finished it are United Kingdom, Spain and Portugal. And uh, in order to fulfill its methodology, uh, we need to do it globally. So many countries are still yet to account for their uh, geosites of international relevance. An important thing happened in the, towards the end of the last century. In 2000, the European Geopark Network was founded, uh, including geoparks from Spain, Germany, Greece, and France. Then in 2003, surprisingly enough, at IUGS and UNESCO withdrew their, their funding, their support for the Global Geosites Program. And uh, we will see that now we are trying to do that uh, this year, 2021. Uh, also important to mention was that IUCN had best practice guidelines on sacred natural sites. So that includes, uh, including also indigenous heritage. In 2007, there was a definition of this scope and scale of geoheritage, including indigenous heritage. So the geoheritage related with sacred sites. 2004, a global geoparks network was, was funded um, to incorporate not just the European, but Asian uh, and many other um, geoparks around the world. 2008, several important things happened. First, the Geological Society of Spain was became the first geoconservation member of IUCN. Before that, there was no other ones, other members of IUCN dedicated to geoconservation. And also, uh, thanks to the Geological Society of Spain, the first IUCN resolution dealing with geoheritage was approved for all, for all countries to comply with. And this included mostly just to talk about geoconservation in the next uh, Congress. 2009, the journal GeoHeritage began to be published. This is the scientific journal of ProGeo. 2011, ProGeo became the second geoconservation member of IUCN after the Geological Society of Spain. In 2012, we had the in the Geological Survey of Spain uh, for the first time a methodological guide for the integration of GeoHeritage in environmental impact studies that uh, was necessary to that to be included with the natural rest of the natural heritage in the impact studies. And then 2012, it, we had the ProGeos Pro book on the state of conservation of geoheritage in Europe. 2012, the, it was the first time that geoheritage formally was present at IUCN uh, World Conservation Congress, and I will, will see more details in the next slide. 2012 also at this Congress in uh, Jeju, the second IUCN resolution was approved with some important cases, for example, like the inclusive terms to be used to refer to nature, not called things just nature biodiversity, because there's also geodiversity and geoheritage and so on. 2013, the Geoheritage Specialist Group uh, began to, well, it was first approved by the World Commission on Protected Areas to help IUCN with geoconservation issues. And 2014, it was the first time that geoconservation was included uh, at the World Parks Congress that took place in Sydney, Australia. Here you can see a picture of the people that were participating in relation with geoconservation at this meeting of uh, in, in, in Australia, in Sydney. That's in the Blue Mountains. So this is some of the activities that we organized for the fifth IUCN World Conservation Congress in South Korea in 2012, an intensive course uh, with theoretical and practical aspects, a round table, a poster with uh, how geodiversity underpins biodiversity, in this case, in relation to Pleistocene um, paleobiology. Uh, the approval of this uh, IUCN resolution uh, recommending the use of inclusive terms, and this is the meeting that we had to organize this geoheritage specialist group within um, the different working groups of the World Commission on Protected Areas. So many things going on at that year in 2012 during this Conservation Congress of IUCN. 
Following this, in 2015, the third uh, geoconservation member of IUCN, which is the Spanish Society for the Protection of Geological and Mining Heritage, uh, uh, became and, and now is so far the uh, the the last uh, geoconservation member of IUCN. Hopefully, more will come. Also, 2015. There was a specific chapter geoconservation for the first time included in the new edition of IUCN's book on the protected area governments and management. So now managers of protected areas uh, know that there's this possibility for the geoconservation in, in, their, in their areas of, of, of work. Also in 2015, UNESCO adopted the Global Geopark Program. That's important because that has had uh, a lot of um, help to promote these uh, geopark, geoparks globally. In 2016, the, the next Geolog um, Conservation Congress of IUCN, the third IUCN resolution was approved also. It took place in Hawaii and it was referring to movable geoheritage because that's usually for forgotten and it was not included in the CITES in the, for the conservation of uh, natural objects that usually it's only for species and but movable geoheritage also needs to be protected globally in some cases and I, we have included also this project the pan of geo project funded by the european union for the promotion the pan-african capacity building in geo geological surveys different aspects including geo conservation so now globally i mean globally continent in the continent of africa the, the geological service have had the opportunity to to um, incorporate geoconservation in their tasks and so on uh, to help their countries with the promotion of uh, geoparks for example and with proper inventories finally this last year 2020 uh, after the approval of unesco of the latest uh, the geoparks, uh, the country with more geoparks, global geoparks, is China with 35, and the second one is Spain with 15. Um, also, uh, during the, the latest uh, IUCN Congress, uh, which is partially will take place this year, and the partial of the decisions took place last year, the fourth and fifth IUCN resolutions uh, were approved uh, that are dealing with geoheritage in relation to protected areas and also in relation to mining environments. And that was uh, an important thing to achieve also. That. And then uh, the first edition of this book on best practice uh, guidelines for geoconservation in protected areas. And finally, I want to mention also that there is a proposal of this to the recovery of this global geosites project by IUGS that was uh, abandoned in 2000 three but now with IUCN su su support in the 2012 resolution and if IUGS also supports it then we, we were hoping to continue with this program for the identification of the uh, uh, heritage of international relevance. Um, in re with regards to Spain as a model case of holistical work I am referring to the fact that we have been promoting uh, nationally, regionally, locally and also being present in many of the previous international uh, achievements that I have mentioned with regard to all these issues with legislation, including the IUCN resolutions, but national legislation, regional legislation, and even local municipal legislations. Same for the inventories at all levels, strategies and management plans at all levels, uh, implementing geoparks and protected areas at all these different levels and also developing successful public outreach activities. This is very important and we will mention it later in the conclusions. The ongoing uh, Spanish inventory of geosites uh, so far has identified more than 4,000 geosites of different, of course, different uh, levels of significance, international, national, regional and local with the different colors represented, different regions and so on. As you can see, some of them uh, are not specified publicly. The, the polygon is not specified because uh, of uh, problems with uh, plundering of uh, paleontological or mineralogical sites. 
This is a, a must for any country to know what you have, the vulnerabilities, risk of degradation, and possibilities, potential use of all the uh, geoheritage that is present in the country. The problem is that with some exceptions, uh, Portugal, Spain, UK, some countries also, a few, a few more countries have done a systematic national geoheritage inventories and assessments. But normally, most of countries have not carried this inventory, so which implies that there's a major gap in geoconservation endeavors globally. Um, that's why 2011, this is the publication in 2015, this geoheritage toolkit was uh, promoted as a method developed in Australia for the systematic inventory and assessment of geoheritage at all scales. Needed to allocate them into a category of geoheritage at a scale of preference and to assess their level of significance for science and education. So, which will allow this inventory through this geoheritage toolkit to properly uh, use and uh, preserve geoheritage. The level of significance is crucial for this proper management because it will allow to establish these priorities and to compare also with uh, uh, other countries within each nation and region and so on. This is part, this was published in 2007 and still being used, uh, of course, uh, today. In this a book that I mentioned of 2020, the, the best practice guideline number one, actually number one, specified that the terminology should be consistent to avoid confusion. And that has been an issue because mm, we, we have identified a problem with the accelerated evolution of knowledge during these last uh, three decades. There has been uh, discordant schools in conflict with regard to the conceptual framework for the basic terminology. Something that everybody should have clear, not just geologists, but any working by the working with heritage, cultural or natural heritage, is that heritage refers to the elements which are worth preserving for their value. This means that not all heritage has the same value, so we can establish priorities, as I mentioned, and not all elements are heritage, only those with value, so we don't need to preserve everything. Another important issue that not so many people are aware is that what establishes the type of heritage is the type of element, not the type of value. So, because the value is something that we have in our head, it's always cultural, but this doesn't mean that heritage Everything is uh, cultural heritage. The type of heritage is established by the type of element. So if we have natural elements with value, would be natural heritage. Cultural elements with value, cultural heritage. In our case, geological elements that have sufficient value would be geological heritage. And another issue with this uh, inconsistent and confusion that has come in is coming with the terminology, is that we believe uh, that uh, our teams, research teams, that geodiversity refers to geological diversity, not to the elements. So when we want to talk about the elements, we don't call them geodiversity, we call them geological elements, because geodiversity is a parameter, not a set of elements, and geodiversity considers all the geological elements, including those that have absolutely no significance or relevance to be preserved. So we don't preserve geodiversity just because it's all important. What's important is what has value, which is the heritage, the geoheritage. And another issue was with regarding this term that was proposed a few years ago, geodiversity element, because it is misguiding with regard to the confusion with to be used for geoheritage, geodiversity element. Uh, is uh, unfortunate. So finally, to finish with this, uh, some suggestions for the future. We should strengthen the coordination of efforts globally. We should learn from mistakes. Uh, we know what has happened, so we can we have valuable lessons that should allow us to move on and improve. We should share our knowledge and experience both within our country and between uh, countries internationally. And it's important to invest time, effort, and resources in public outreach. Uh, we need literacy 
for our society with regard to geoscience and particularly to what parts of of the ge what which geological elements are important that's the geoheritage and that's important also for our decision makers so we need to also pro provide them with the sufficient information and also because society one of the key issues for the the, the local socioeconomic development comes with the promotion of geotourism so a proper enjoyment of uh, the geoheritage, the geodiversity also, the landscape, the geological la la landscapes comes from a proper knowledge of what we have and its relevance. So thank you very much for your interest. Here are some of the organizations that have supported this work and that uh, we are working for the Geological Survey of Spain and the university for our scientific societies and for the international unions that are pro promoting the preservation and proper knowledge uh, about um, natural heritage and in particular geological heritage. Thank you very much.